Hi everyone. So here is the last part of this four part tutorial that shows how to set up this Africa map interactive tool that on click of a country on the map of Africa brings up the information of the flag, highlights its key details on the table and shows the key statistics of the selected country. In the previous part, I walked through how to set up this summary table using VLOOKUP to bring up the statistics of the selected country. I also showed how to get this table to highlight the focus country using a red border, red font and uh, italics. And I also showed how this flag was set up, how it's set up to change on click of a new country. I have the links for the previous tutorial so that you can go back and look at them. We will focus on how this shape, this map was set up in this first place. And the map you see here, the map of, map of Africa you see here is a collection of shapes, each shape representing one out of the 56 countries on the African map. And what we observe is on click of one of this shape, of any of the shapes, all the shapes have been set up so that on click, of the shape we see in essence three actions we see the shape change its color and we see this cell cell 035 get populated with the name of the shape and if you click the shape once again it changes to gray and then you can go ahead to click another shape and then you see the same thing happens of course we already understand how the summary table the flag and the um, extended table is updating in Due to the shape, due to this change. So in this tutorial, we're only going to focus on the actions that cause the shape to change color and to populate cell O35 with the name of the selected country. I have broken down what exactly is happening on click of the shape so that you can follow along with, with the macro that is going to be created in Excel. The only way to generate the kind of actions that convert shapes into clickable objects that on that trigger events when they are clicked is using VBA. VBA stands for Visual Basic Applications. And you can create VBA codes by accessing the Visual Basic Editor in Excel. And to do that, you access the Developer tab and you have to enable it. It doesn't traditionally show up on, on this typical Excel view. You have to go to Options and enable the Developer tab view. Before we go on ahead, of course, you might be wondering, how are we able to get out the names of the country? After all, these are essentially shapes. And if you're not familiar with the African continent, it's hard to tell what shape really stands for what country. Let's assume that we have the, we've done step one, we've brought in our shapes. Naming the country shapes, if I right click on the shapes, you would, you would see that they are named. So I have right clicked on that and you can see that it has the name of the country Egypt. If you, I also right click around, you see the name of the country show up. So for each of these 56 countries you see represented here and the 56 shapes that you see, I have had to name the shapes so that this macro will run just exactly how you need it to run. Before I go on to do, set up the macro, I'm going to create a test shape. I'm going to run a demonstration using a basic shape available in Microsoft. Let me choose the heart shape. So I have added the shape and then I'm going to go ahead to name the shape. Let me just, let's assume this heart represents a state and I'm just going to call it heart beat. Yeah. So I have named the shape. I essentially just selected the shape went over to the name box and typed the new name of the shape. With that done, we're now going to go over to the Visual Basic Editor and create a macro. And then once we're back, we're going to assign the macro to the shape. And this macro essentially demonstrating what we want to show here, which is to return the name of this shape into a designated cell somewhere on this worksheet and to change the color of the shape. Before we go over to the Visual Basic Edit, so I'm just going to de designate a cell over here that we're going to use. The cell is Z28, and Z28 is going to be the 
uh, O35 here, which is the cell in which we're going to return the name of the country into. With that said, I'm going to go over to Visual Basic Editor Developer by clicking Developer and clicking Visual Basic. Now we're in Visual Basic Editor. We're going to go over to click Insert and insert a new module. I'm just going to fill out so that this fill out the window so that this is the main focus. And in creating a macro, there are three primary things to put in place. The first thing is to ensure that your macro has a beginning line and an end line. The beauty of the Visual Basic Editor is once you type in a opening opening line in the syntax that is recognized by Excel VBA, it automatically generates the closing line. So this syntax is SUB sub and then the name of your macro and then you can give it whatever name you want. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna go this macro hard call. So you put in the name of your macro and then you put in open brackets and put close brackets and then you press enter. And once you press enter, it automatically generates the closing line, the end line. And then in between the opening line and the end line, we're going to place our actual code. And then the next thing, the second thing is the declaration of variables. This is particularly important because we are working with shapes. You can work with different types of objects in Excel Basic, in Visual Basic Editor. Because we're working with shapes, we have to declare the shape object. And um, to declare a variable, you use the code DIM space, and then you put in the name of the your variable. Well, I'm just going to call it a shape. So a shape is the name of a variable as shape. So you notice this contextual um, list that comes up because the Excel VB editor is recognizing that you're trying to declare, and then it shows you the different types of objects you can de declare. And the one we are concerned with is shape. So yes, but of shape for us, and I'm just going to click enter. So that is the format for declaring a variable name, the name of the variable as the type of object. In addition to shape, you can declare you, the, the other mo more popular variables are range, string, integer, long, and um, controls. Those are the ones I use a lot of time, but they, of course, like you noticed in that list, there are many others. So I said we're going to declare a variable and then we're going to assign the shape to a variable. So to assign a shape to a variable, you use set a shape, which is the variable we just created, equals to heart. I mean, the name is heartbeat, but around this heartbeat, if we only typed heartbeat, this would create confusion in running this code because Heartbeats could mean different things on the workbook we're working on. It could be the name of a sheet. It could be a line within a cell. It could even be a content on another worksheet. So to be um to make certain that we have the we are pointing to the right heartbeats, the one that we have focused, we have our focus on. We're going to nest around this word heartbeat, to find some other attributes that will make it clear what we're referring to and the attributes are going to by defining are going to explain where on the workbook we can find the heartbeat and what type of object is it whether it's a shape it's a cell it's a range so so as to make this instruction very clear so to define where it is we're going to use active sheet dot shapes open bracket quotation mat close quotation close bracket it's instead of active sheets, you can use this sheet or this worksheet, and then you can use sheets, open brackets, quotation mark, the name of the actual name of the worksheets that we're focused on. But to keep things simple, we're going to use active sheets. So we this is the second thing out of the three things we said we want to we have to do to create a macro. The first thing was to set up the opening and closing line, sub and end sub. Second thing was to declare the variables and, and assign context to the variables. And then the third thing is to automate the task that we have in mind. And recall the two tasks that we have in mind. The first is to make the content of cell Z28 the name of the shape. And then the second thing 
is to change the color of the shape to red if it's gray and to gray if it's red. So on to the first thing. The, to do the first thing, this is the code that we're going to use to get it done. Range open bracket quotation Z28 close quotes close brackets dot value is equals to a shape. So range Z28 value is equals to a shape not name. Recall that a shape it was referring to an object and we the object's name is heart speed so we want that name to reflect in range z28 so that's the first thing set up the second thing which is to change the color of heart speed from red to gray or from gray to red so we're going to set that up and how we do that is a shape is to call on the attributes of a shape that define its color which are fill dot for color dot rgb specifically selecting rgb there are different ways to define color attributes digitally you can use the stains its shade skin color but since we already know the rgb code of the color we have in mind we'll go on ahead with rgb and the rgb code of the color we have in mind is for red it is 12800 and something i have to point out is notice how this opens up this tool tip opens up when you type rgb and open brackets to show you what in what order to type in the requested um, part of this code so i've typed it out 12800 this will make the chain the shape red in color so let's go back to the worksheet and test this out. So again, we're back on the worksheets and then we're going to go to macros and then I'm going to click hard call and then click run just to run that code we just created. It works how we want it to work. It changes the color to red. But recall that we want it to not just change to red, but on click to change to gray if it's red and to change to red if it's green so i'm going to clear this and then i'm going to go back to the code to complete the setup so we've established that this code works this line of code works well to change the color of shape and what we're going to do is wrap it around an if and end if code lines so i'm just going to, i'm going to demonstrate what i just said now i'm copying this line so that i can duplicate it in different places so to wrap around wrap um, if surround it, what I do here is I type if this if this shape is red, which is this line we've already created, then change the shape. I copy. Remember that I copied the line so that I can just go back in there to update the attributes. So and change the shape to gray. And remember the RGB attributes are two one four, two one four, two one four. But what if the shape is gray? So we're going to add another line of code, which goes as this else if. I'm just copying it out because I've already copied it. Else if the shape is gray, because this is now for the shape is gray. I'm going to change this color RGB color to the ones for the gray. Two one four two one four two one four. Then I'm going to copy it again. Then make it red. And end it with end if. So the thing about if lines of code is there's always if, there's always then, and there's always end if. Sometimes it might be else if, sometimes it might not be. But those three things should always be reflected. So with that in mind, we have set up the code to run. And let's go back to the sheet now to test it out. We've already tested it out, so we're just going to go ahead and assign the macro, which is the last action. And to assign the macro, we click the shape. We right click it when you right click it you will see the um, assign micro, macro option you click it, it when you see this it would give you the list of macros already in the sheet and we named it hard save so we're going to click hard save and click ok so we have assigned the macro 
and now when you hover over heart beats you see this clickable mouse form and then when you click it notice that it does what it's supposed to do it changes the shape to gray it brings the name here and if you click it again it changes the shape to red you don't need it to do anything here because that's exactly the action that is happening here so this now mirrors exactly the actions we see on this um, map which is when you click this color changes the name updates when you click it again it turns to gray click it click it again it turns to gray so we have set up the macro to demonstrate exactly the kind of code that is running on this Africa map to sh change the shape color and to assign the name of the shape to a cell in the worksheets thank you for watching and, and hope to see you on subsequent tutorials